Now what I want to do is talk about DBFS or decibels full scale. So we'll talk about what this means. And this is really important to understand because this is the way that amplitude is going to be represented within your digital audio workstation. When audio is like represented inside your computer or I guess by your speaker, there's actually an upper limit to how large the amplitude can be. In your computer, what this actually refers to is the word length of your computer. So when people talk about 32 bits or something, there's a maximum number that can be stored by that. And your computer can't just store infinite information, at least for what we can understand. And when you think about your speaker cone, your speaker is only able to push that cone out so far before the speaker actually suffers mechanical damage or it breaks. I mean, it can't just go out, shoot out like 50 feet and expect you expect your speaker to still work and come back. So what ends up happening with decibels full scale is we try to account for that. When it comes to a computer, our reference value for dB full scale is the largest number that your computer can possibly represent. As a result, all values in your um, digital audio workstation are generally going to be smaller than that maximum value that your computer can represent. Because if you are representing that number exactly, or you're trying to go over it, what ends up happening is you end up getting clipping. Think about what this means in terms of dB for a second. What you're doing is you're taking 10 times the log base 10 of a ratio that's generally going to be less than 1. Because the power in whatever signal or wherever you are in terms of amplitude is going to be less than the maximum value that you're representing. If it's always at the maximum value, then it's going to be one. And the you know log base 10 of one is going to be zero. And if it's smaller than that, you're having um, a number that's less than one. So you're taking the log of a number less than one, and now you're going to get a negative number. So that's why all of your faders within your digital audio workstation are actually going to be in negative dB. It's because they're actually represented as dB full scale or full scale decibels. And anything that tries to go above it is going to get clipped off to zero dB. And this is where it gets interesting. You have plus and minus zero dB, which refers to whether you're talking about a positive or negative amplitude. Now, of course, taking the log of a negative number doesn't really work. And that's why we were defining it as 10 times the log base 10 of the power of these two signals. But in general, you can think about the highest positive number your computer can represent and the highest negative number your computer can represent and kind of go from there. In your digital audio workstation, your zero crossing is actually going to be minus infinity dB because what's happening is you're taking 10 times the log base 10 of what's basically the power in your signal, which is going to be zero, over the power in your reference signal, which is going to be a really large number. And if you can think about what's going on here, you're taking the log base 10 of some number less than one and you're getting larger and larger negative numbers until you get to the point where you basically get minus infinity because what that's asking is what pow what 10 raised to what power is going to give me zero? And you basically have to go up to like minus infinity to, to get 10 raised to any power to get it even close to zero. So that's kind of why when we think about our zero crossing within a digital audio workstation, it's represented as minus infinity dB and you have plus zero dB on top and minus zero dB on the bottom to represent the sort of instantaneous positive and negative axes of the maximum value your computer can represent. So let's actually look at this here in a digital audio workstation. If you notice within your digital audio workstation, your meters that are there on your mixer and stuff are actually represented in dBFS or decibels full scale. So here you have zero, here you have minus six and minus 12, minus 24. They just say zero or they just say dB, but these are actually dB full scale, not dB SPL. And that's where I think a lot of people, a lot of young producers get confused because they're kind of expecting, oh, well, like what's minus 12? Isn't, aren't decibels supposed to be positive? Remember that this is relative to the maximum value your computer can store, not based on relative to the overall like perception of sound. Now, some of you guys are looking here and you're saying, what the heck, how is this going above zero? Didn't we just say that the maximum value our computer can represent is zero? Yes, and we'll talk about this in a minute. The first thing I wanted to show you guys is what it looks like here in an audio file. Notice how you have zero dB, you have things in each, both for the left and the right waveform. It kind of goes down negative, minus six, minus nine, minus 12, minus 24. Then you have your zero crossing there in the middle, which is minus infinity. Then it goes back to minus 24, minus 12, minus 9, minus 6, minus 3, and then 0 being that limit that you can't go above here in an audio file. Now, generally, these audio files are 16 or 24-bit wave files, which 
of course have this upper limit. So if you try to go above that zero dB limit, you're gonna get clipping. And when we talk about timbre and things like that, that clipping actually will change the harmonic content of the sound. Once again, the scale, it says dB, but this is actually dB full scale. I hope this video demystified the difference between decibels sound pressure level and decibels full scale. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. And in the next videos, what I may do is touch on going above zero dB FS within your digital audio workstation internally, which is kind of an advanced topic. So feel free to skip that if you don't want to watch it. And then we'll move on to the second property of sound, which is frequency. See you guys then.